Okay, hi. Um, uh, welcome. Nice of you to, to drop by. Um, please tell me uh, what's your name, uh, what's the name of your company, and what does, you, do you, uh, what does it do? Okay, uh, I'm Eric Mackay. Uh, I'm from Vivo, uh, and we're the world's number one music video streaming platform. So that means that um, uh, just like uh, um, Spotify? Uh, yeah, but uh, with audio visual as opposed to audio only. Uh -huh. So, so um, with yeah, video, mo yeah. Yeah, <laughs> most people will know of Vivo from v Vivo on YouTube. So we provide most of the uh, major label content through to YouTube as well as a lot of the independents. Um, but then in certain markets, we also have Vivo.com, our mobile apps and connected devices such as um, Google TV, Boxy, Roku, Xbox Live. Um, yeah. So what's your unique selling point? Um, our unique selling point is really about uh, monetization. So the, the whole reason that we were created um, by Universal and Sony um, was to bring back the, the power away from YouTube in terms of how they monetize music video. So we sell our ad inventory at a much higher rate than YouTube sell. So the idea is that um, before Vivo, if someone like Beyonce uh, was creating a video and it cost um, $500 million or half a million dollars, however much she wants to spend, yeah, yeah. Um, it probably would never have recouped the cost. Um, now that we exist, we charge much higher rates, so you recoup the cost of creating much more um, entertaining video products. So more video products can then be made. So it's really about monetization. Hmm. So I want the, 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 the price of making a video uh, will go up then? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, I think because of technological advancements, the price of making videos has actually come down, <laughs> um, but we allow people to recoup that investment a lot quicker, which means they can actually make money out of video. There was a very long time where music videos were created um, as just a promotional vehicle, um, and people would always go, well, I have to spend that money on creating the video, but it's lost money. Mm -hmm. um, now yeah. they can see it as I can create a product that's a new product alongside a single that actually has its own value and can generate revenues alongside that. So who is your target audience? Uh, everyone. Absolutely <laughs> everyone. Well, um, everyone who loves music. Yeah, we, we have no... Um, objections to any type of music on Vivo so the idea is about giving our consumers the music that they want to listen to wherever mm -hmm. they are whenever they want um, so we have pop we have rock we, we have classical we have a huge long tail of content and um, it's really about working with the labels to help them monetize that content um, but we we're home for everything mm. so how many customers do you have at the moment how many people pay for Oh, we're free to consumer, so it's completely ah. ad-supported, um, but we serve up 4 billion music videos a month globally. Wow, wow. So, but so you, 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 the money, the, the business model is, is, is an ad yes, model? Yes, completely ad-supported. So we have no subscription, there is no cost to the consumer, so it feels free to them. So we generate all of our revenues by selling ad space to big high profile brands so the likes of mcdonald's or ford um, or coca-cola yeah. they they will buy ad space and pay a premium to be associated with the content that we have so are you uh, dreading the future when it will all become more mobile and, and ads seem to be a problem there no not at all um we we embrace mobile we we're, yeah. we're available on mobile all mobile devices as it is um and we monetize the streams in exactly the same way. We see the video as just being a video and we don't really look at the device that it's on. It's We try to make sure that if, if I have an iPhone and you have an Android, that we can both watch that same video and the experience is the same. <laughs> And the ads around it as well. Yeah, so we only use, um, well, primarily use um, pre-roll video advertising. So there would be a video ad beforehand, as if you were watching TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And we try to keep the rest of the page very clean, so you don't have banner ads. It's it's very, very clean experience mm. with a big video screen. Mm. Yeah, I, well, I can imagine that working. It's, it's probably with the banner ads and things like that that are a problem. It's yeah, and also brands don't pay very much money for those. So you buy banner ads through networks and they're really, really low cost and you can't really control the type of adverts that appear next to content. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that we do is we work really closely with brands to make sure that the advertising creative that they deliver to us is relevant to the audience and that we're targeting in the right way to make sure that they hit their targets as well as us hitting our targets to pay revenues back to the labels. So do you sometimes say no to brands? If, 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 if like, for instance, a, 
a diaper company would want to buy it. Yeah, I think if um, <laughs> if somebody wanted to sell diapers and all they wanted to do was target uh, One Direction, there's probably a problem there. Um, <laughs> but you know, we we try and build a campaign that works for the brand. So if somebody wants to advertise diapers on Vivo, you know, we can look at the types, uh, the demographic that they would need to hit in order yeah, to do yeah. that. And instead of them saying, so we want to be around One Direction, we can go, well, have you thought about maybe this artist or this artist? Someone you know, who, can... who talks to a, a, an older female uh, audience. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your biggest challenge? Um, life. <laughs> no, sorry. No, <laughs> concerning <laughs> your company. <laughs> um, our biggest challenge is probably about growth and trying to move into new markets so um, we're available globally on YouTube um, but Vivo.com and our mobile apps are only available in um, a handful of countries at the moment so uh, because of our ownership structure being Sony and Universal um, we need to make sure that when we move into a new market we're completely legal so we have to make sure that we have the publishing rights and we've worked with the collection societies and also bringing on new relevant content because for us um, we're about to launch in the Netherlands and it's really important that we work with Dutch labels to make sure we have Dutch content because us arriving in a market and going here, here's Vivo from the US, enjoy it, doesn't really work. We have to have a really localized voice so we have relevant content and we will have a site that will be programmed in Dutch and it will speak to the local market. So it sounds like a time-consuming process. Thankfully there's about 150 of us. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so they can all go to different parts of the yeah. the world. And well, the biggest lesson so far? Um, that's a really tough question. <laughs> Again, life. No. Um, I think the biggest lesson is probably from our, the European side of the business is more about the the localization. Um, I think as a US company, um, they've always looked at the world with US eyes and actually as we move into new markets the the need to be relevant and I think everybody in Vivo has started to learn actually you know the independents aren't as important in America as they are in Europe so the UK for instance a huge percentage of the UK music market is made up of independents so we've worked really really closely with AIM the Association of Independent Music to really talk to their labels and help them to understand the benefits of being on Vivo mm -hmm. and I think that's probably our biggest learning curve is just trying to understand each market for its own merits and treat it as an individual market yeah yeah, okay. and that's a, that's a problem that came by a few times today. It's, it's still quite difficult that every country has the, its own rules and its own... Yeah, completely. And you know, if you look at a market like France, where legally 50% of the output on broadcast has to be local language, um, so we can't necessarily say to people you have to listen to 50% of your music as this, but we can program it so it we're promoting local artists. But mm. then there's lots of advertisers who will deliver creatives to us and say well we want this to run across this market this market this market it's actually illegal to run adverts in france that aren't in french so we have to then go back to brands and say you know you, you have to translate your creative otherwise we can't take the creative so you know, there's there's a lot of things mm -hmm. we're learning as we're going but being local and being relevant in each market i think that's the key to us moving forwards and actually growing what makes you enthusi enthusiastic when you look at the music industry? Oh, I love music. I love music so much. Um, but music is something else than the industry. Ah, yeah. See, I love the <laughs> business more than anything. Oh, oh, yeah, the business? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was a really pathetic child. Um, I, <laughs> when I was 12 and I went into my school... Um, careers advice session which uh -huh. is what we call them in the UK um, and the careers advisor says to me so um, what do you want to do when, when you're older and I was like well I want to manage bands and he's like well <laughs> not many people do that and maybe have you thought about joining the police <laughs> and I'm like, I don't see how either of those two kind of relate to each other um, but the first job I had in the music industry was for a management company and I was part of the management of Atomic Kitten and you know we sold like 12 million records globally and you know big pop success yeah um, I love the fact that the music business is constantly changing you know we we have as an industry have a product that is 
mass market and it's very easy to duplicate. So we have to be so much more adaptable and aware than a lot of other markets. We, we have to be ahead of the game all the time and look at what the future is. And I think the future for the music industry is the most exciting thing because it could be anything. What, what has been difficult to accept? Because you are very enthusiastic, but a lot of, well, a lot of years I've been here were a lot of people complaining, saying, well, there is no money, there's no right stuff. And, and uh, well, it w- wasn't too much op- optimism then. Well, I think if, if all you look at is, oh, where's the money? Is the, the, It's all gone. There's no money yeah. left in the industry. No one buys uh, yeah. CDs anymore. It's like you're in it for the wrong reason. It's like it, music is about being creative. And whether that's you're a creative person making music or you're, or you're a creative business person working out the solution to the problem. And I think if you start to get downtrodden about how difficult it is and where's the money, go and work somewhere else. Like the music industry, it should be about it being exciting and it being challenging and you know, every day should be fun. You feel like you're having a nervous breakdown, but you should at least be getting excited at least once a day about the fact that either you've heard a new band or a new company's come up to you and said, we've got this great idea, we'd like to work with you. So there has to be something that gets you really excited every day. Mm. Otherwise, go and be a banker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally, <laughs> what's, what's the most important trend you see concerning music and technology? Um, it's probably about... it. Uh, from my point of view not necessarily Vivo's point of view Mm -hmm. is really about um, devices being a window to access content Um, I think having a destination of trying to convince people to go to one place all the time to access things is a mistake instead you should be where the consumer is and try and make sure that whatever they want to view or listen to you're there and you're their first point of contact to it and I think that's the the real challenge the music industry faces is working out what is the next thing that people will want to consume and how they'll how they'll use different devices is you know is a tablet is that the future or is it something that's not even been released yet mm-hmm. and, and trying to understand all these amazing technology products you know I was on a panel before uh, with a company called Viclone and the the technology that they have is incredible and it's basically People use an app and they film things with their phone and it automatically pieces the video together. Absolutely groundbreaking, the way that works. And for me, that's the kind of future, is having people be really disruptive in a market and doing something that's completely different. That's where the future is. It's like doing the same thing over and over again. It's boring. Why would you do that? (laughs) So what does your schedule look like over here? Oh, it's insane. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But good insane. So um, I... I was saying to somebody before, doing what I do, uh, I don't get to see as many bands as I love seeing. Yeah. But these kind of events, I'm like, right, I'm circling things in the schedule, going, I'm going to go see that, I'm going to go see that. Uh, I'm meeting up with a band after this that um, we want to do some work with, um, who are a really exciting British band that just came high up in the polls of the BBC um, Sound 2013. Um, you know, see what happens. Uh, the world is my oyster and uh, the day is young and basically there'll be lots of this (laughs) okay thanks very much (laughs) thank you thank you (laughs) 